that a quorum is planning on attending, then we would just do another virtual meeting. So that's about it. Okay. Yeah, the workload's light. Um, and I would like to have, you know, uh, better diversity and inclusion representation. Yeah. Uh, on the board as well. So, um, so stronger diversity would be great on the board. So anyway, again, self-nominate or nominate somebody else. And then I, all we do is we just ask for a statement of interest from the person as to why you would want to be on the board. Mm -hmm. And then that's about it. Okay. So fairly pro forma to get on. So that was my issue. Yeah, because I would be, I would be sort of mildly interested, but I need to find out more before I commit to anything, and I would need to, I would need to check with work because I'm in this, I'm in this weird gray area with the chaos project right now because um, it it's a Linux Foundation open source project, um, yep. but I'm also on the board and an investor in Baturgia. Uh -huh. um, which on that side is a clear conflict of interest. So I am right now at Pivotal not allowed to um, not allowed to make any recommendations for for metrics tools. Okay. Um, because of the conflict of interest, right? That just sure. that just makes sense. Yep. Um, uh, undoubtedly. So I need to make sure that nobody thinks that. Oh, I lost you for a second. Oh, how about now? Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Oh. I think it might Matt's be Matt's internet one. connection. Yeah. I'm back. I'm back. You were the last one. Yeah. I was Daniel the last just one. messaged me that he's going to be late. Okay. I did catch that you had a potential. I understood your conflict of interest. At yeah, Pivotal. which shouldn't, shouldn't transfer to the Chaos Project because it's a Linux Foundation project, but I would just need to... Okay. I would need to double check and I would need to... And I, I should you. look at the, the board and stuff and see... Okay. And the amount of time, honestly, is probably like three hours a year. Okay. Depending on how long the meetings run. You know, it's maybe like three to four meetings a year. Just put it that way. Okay. I have a one-on-one -on -one with my boss tomorrow. I can chat to him about that. Okay. I'm also interested. Okay. Cool. Well, that's two for two. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. also suspect that Nicole Huseman would be interested. She's not on this call right now, but yeah. um, we should mention it to her. Okay. Um, maybe, maybe you should t just tee up a quick email to the the DNI working group mailing list. Yeah. And that way, we're not missing people who just don't happen to be on the call. Yep, that's fair. Right. Right. This shouldn't be a prerequisite. Yeah. This call. Exactly. Okay. When would I need to express interest? What's that? When would I need to? Oh, play? I'll bring it up. Okay. I, I'll tell you in December. Okay. So basically the first thing I would do is talk to the board. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And see if they're even interested in, in doing this. So, so this there's nothing, there's nothing you, you need from, from us to. Not at the oh, moment. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. Cool. Okay, okay. That's all I have. Okay. What else do we have on the agenda? Um I feel like Georg and I talked about the proposals last week. So what I want is uh, curious about what Emma thinks of these. Um, do we want to discuss open canvas? I don't know what that is. Sure. Uh, if you click on the link that I provided there. Yep. There's something I had sent to the mailing list last two weeks ago okay and emma was the only one who responded okay the idea behind this open canvas is 
you know how there are business canvases where you outline the key resources, strategies, unique um, selling points, who your customers are, challenge, channels, and so on. And this open canvas is something the Mozilla folks uh, from the Open Leaders uh, program where I'm part of um, put together to figure out, okay, what is my project about? Who are the people that I'm developing for? Who are the people who are contributing? How do I reach them and so on? So that's what this is about. And I had wanted to include a link to Emma's reply because it was very thoughtful and she had really good feedback. But I realized that our archive is empty. The DNI mailing list archive is empty. And so, huh. That seems like a mailing list configuration issue, Matt. <laughs> I can look at it right now. <laughs> I, I will send that email actually yeah. right now. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, Unless, Emma, are you a are you an admin on the mailing list? So can you just like? Well, it has under ar archiving options. It says archive messages question mark and it's, yes is selected. Is the archive file public or private? Public is selected. How often should they be archived? Year or monthly? Weekly or daily selected monthly, so it might be that 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 monthly archive isn't ready yet. Is that probably the cause? No, it that just uh, all that means. I've I've used Mailman before. All that means is that when somebody clicks on the archive, it'll say January, February, March, April. Okay, okay. so yeah. that shouldn't matter. It's set to archives. Well, it must be a bug or, or another setting that I don't see. When did the mailing list start? I feel like it's been a month. Um, okay. I can check also that. Since we're on the topic, instead of fixing the mailing list, maybe we want to just move the DNI conversation over to this course. I thought we weren't using discourse. <laughs> so, sorry, what am I? I, I sorry, I th you just said that we're going to move it to discourse, and I thought we weren't doing that. Well, the chaos project as a whole, there doesn't seem to be a lot of uh, support for that idea, but the work groups are autonomous. So we can decide to use discourse as the DNI channel and then invite the rest of the chaos community to join us there when mm. they feel ready. Okay, that seems like a bigger conversation or maybe not. I don't think it's a conversation at all. It's just us deciding we will use discourse instead of mailing list, and then it's done. You know, the rationale last week for the chaos project was just things seem to be moving just fine with the mail list. Mm -hmm. And we had just kind of taken the time to set those up. And so before we go <laughs> shifting, the, shifting anything again, let's really make sure that we have a need for discourse, at least for the larger chaos project. That was the only rationale last week. You're muted, Emma. I just need a second. Sorry, it's the time my children leave the house. I'll be right back. Okay. Sure. Hi, Daniel. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Sorry for the delay. I was fighting with the security people just to get a meeting room. <laughs> I got okay. You. you did it, though? Yeah. Good job. Sorry for the delay. Oh, no worries. You have a gigantic echo. Are you in a dungeon or something? No, I don't know. It's a, it's a meeting room with some chairs, a table, some beamer. Okay. <laughs> Usual meeting room. I was imagining a gigantic castle and a room bigger than <laughs> our entire university. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the middle of nowhere, in, close to an industrial area, so you don't want to come here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, but don't, um, don't, don't know the place. Yes. yes it's, uh, not a lot going on there. Yeah. yeah. Since we're talking about discourse, shall we conclude the our conversation?
and then we move on to the open canvas. Yeah, I guess I guess maybe my interpretation of the the conversation that we had last week was maybe maybe a little bit different than yours because what what I thought we had decided was that the um, that we kind of wanted to try to keep all of the conversations sort of in one place. So right now that's the mailing lists um, because some people participate in multiple working groups and then to make them go to two separate tools seems um, hard because you're kind of fragmenting some of the, some of the conversations. So I thought we had sort of decided to keep the mailing lists until they didn't work for the project, not until they didn't work for a single working group. And that makes sense I, to me too. And that, that's why I said it was a longer conversation, right? Yeah. Like I was deciding to fork or, or branch or whatever um, metaphor it is. It seems like something that we should all like agree with and have good reasons for why that is. I don't know. I, I think it's a, I do think it's a bigger discussion. And I think my understanding from the way the decision was written is that was, I think, I think that kind of makes sense for a project to at least, you know, agree on communication methods. It's also about like, think about who turns up to chaos. Oh, these people are over here. Oh, those people are over there. Like it just makes it harder. So, and that's one of the reasons I'm talking about decision-making because it, it's really like, and because I, my lens is leadership, right? Like when people, the lens I was using is like people, it helps people to understand where decisions come from and what like makes a decision final just so that they can, you know, maybe participate in future, those sorts of things. That was just to like reference my questions. Okay, so the, the reason why I think uh, DNI would be good to move is because we have a different mailing list from the overall project mailing list. And so we are not asking anyone except the ones who are interested in the work group to switch to a different medium, but then it would interact the same way because the um, you still get email updates for all of the messages and you don't have to go to discourse to stay up to date on what we do. You just have to sign up once, just like you do for the mailing list. And whether you sign up for the DNI mailing list on listserv with mailman or with discourse, I think there is no, no difference because the rest of the mailing list doesn't get affected. Anyway, that, that's why I think we can switch without disrupting anything. But, but then we, all of all of us still need to use the mailing lists and and discourse. Now I, I understand what you're saying that you can kind of use discourse as a as a mailing list, but I I mean what problem are we trying to solve? It feels like it feels like we're switching tools because we want to switch tools, but I don't, we don't really have a problem right now that we need to solve. And I'm not a fan of, I'm not a fan of switching tools to switch tools. I just, I don't know. All right. I'm going to shut up now because you know, you know, my opinion on this. I, I, yep. I just, I, yeah. I've also said enough. <laughs> yeah. I, I plus one Dawn and, and there's like all of like the reasons are really important. And also, it's just us there, and we post once a month. Like, you know, people make it, oh, look, the Chaos Project isn't very busy, or it's not very active. There's all kinds of things that, that the signals that we might send, we might not think of it, but to consider them. That was the rationale, again, last week for the overall project. Don't switch unless there really seems to be pressure to switch. So I did look up the Chaos, the help desk ticket, and it was... Um, like mid-October, so it's been a month, and I'll still send them a note with respect to archiving, but it's possible that the way that it's set up now, Emma, you said it's archiving once a month or monthly? Monthly, that just means it, it that when you... That oh, just, that's just a display issue. It that's a display just, issue. It doesn't... Um, okay. If it's being properly archived, you will see the archives there from and the it first... it October and November. Yeah, from the, the very day. first message, because I used to admin a bunch of mailman lists, and the first thing okay. I would do is send a basically a welcome message, which acted as a test message where I could test and that archived, archived immediately. And I it was see. always archived immediately because that was one of my tests. Got it. I will send the email right now. Yeah. Yeah. It seems to be configured fine. Yeah. 
It could be a permissions issue on the on the server side too, because that sometimes causes things not to get properly archived. But okay, so let's uh, let's go back to the go back to the agenda. Um, Garrick, you s we started talking about the open canvas. Do we want to keep talking about that, or are there other higher priority yeah. things that we want to talk about? Um, I'm open to anything. The two things that I definitely want to get through today are the um, the DNI proposals for the dev rooms because uh, the community dev rooms do on the twenty third. So we need to finalize some proposals. And we also, I think, should discuss uh, your email, Emma, and your involvement, given that you're one of the two maintainers. We should talk about what that means to the, to the project and um, what we should do and how we can help you. So I don't know how long the open Canvas discussion is, but if we can get through that fairly quickly, maybe we just keep going since we already started it. I think we should. Do the other two items first because I don't know how long we'll discuss on them. Okay. Do you want to start, Emma? Yeah, I mean, I just, what I needed to flag was that I can't sustain the level of participation that I have right now or like want to. Like, it's not a matter of want, but just my, my OKRs and goals for 2019 will include like using metrics, but it won't really do the deliberate, the deliberate kind of, like Mozilla won't give me the time that, you know, like I'm being paid my Mozilla right now. <clears throat> and I don't personally have the time, like mm -hmm. I actually have to watch myself because you know, probably you all have a problem, right? That you'll just start committing all of your personal time and then you're like, oh wait, I have no actual. So, um, you know, basically I, I tend to continue contributing whatever we build or like establish as a standard metric, but I can't help kind of drive and maintain the project. And um, I think that should be okay, but I just want to, and then my proposal was, okay, so what can I do in the next month or so to kind of back out nicely or like mm -hmm. leave some value behind? And and, uh, and I, I took that from the conversation that Georg's Canvas had when I like, I felt like this working group could really benefit from, and I can't remember what I actually proposed, but it was something like, like what is the goal of this working group? Right, like, and, and Georg had put something about write, writing a survey or something. I'm like, well, I think like we have really like ambitious goals and, uh, you know, to help open source and to like, and I think having some of those things written down would be really helpful. Like if, if this is the work we're doing, like in the true kind of objective KR, the way those work, right? Does this align with an objective for 2019? And maybe that's really what I'm saying is like, I can maybe lead the, that conversation or co-steer whatever word you prefer around. Like, why are we doing this? What, how do we know we're doing it well, right? Some of those KRs. So we don't like drift off, you know, towards like um, personal, you know, project type of initiatives. And then also like, why does it matter to chaos? I think actually chaos could benefit from that exercise as well, right? Like I know why I think diversity inclusion working group belongs in this project. And I've like articulated it in ways that maybe made sense to me, but to chaos so like it'd be good to like just present that as well like here's what we think does that resonate what's missing you know it can even be it'll be your conversation for the chaos group like oh like what's missing from our mission or our vision statement i don't even know if there is one based on this so um all that to say like i i think that i could write down at least what i had in mind with mozilla and why we got involved and what i've seen here and, I, and then I think I would also feel good because I feel bad <laughs> that I'd be leaving. I'd like to leave it in good shape to be successful and then, and then continue contributing, you know, kind of less often, but and I just wanted to get, that's what I thought. Now that it feels valuable or not, I don't know, but um, that's really all I had to say. No, I think that, I think that seems reasonable. And like you said, it's, uh, you know, if it's not, if it's not fitting in well with your work responsibilities for for next year, um, we do want to make sure that we, um, like you said, don't just commit all of our personal time to to the project. So I think that I think that and I, and I think your approach to it makes a lot of sense. I think that those are some of the things that, as a project, we could use a lot of help with. And having you help drive some of those efforts, I think, would be 
I, I would find that useful personally. Others? I, I think that is also something worth doing. Um, the, your reply to the open canvas, and I just reposted to the list so that all of us have it. Um, I think that's a good starting point. And if we could finish that before the end of the year or in the next two, three weeks, then, and document that. that that's the more important part, have that um, documented. I think that would be good for getting the project set up for next next year. Yeah, and um, uh, this this sounds to me like the uh, for discussions we had when you started to get involved in my in terms of hey, this is really interesting for me, but uh, I have to align this to my uh, employee employer interests. Um, and here we are again, and, and that makes a lot of sense. And so perhaps another way we can do all of this together is to try to do, uh, to have some discussion about why we are here and what you said, basically, how we can measure success in this specific case for this working group is probably one of the key things we can discuss. I can start with this. So in terms of how can I measure success uh, for this working group would be um, well, from a personal point of view, that the things that we are producing are reusable by others. So basically, this means to finish all of the metrics that we are still open, I mean, the focus areas and, the, and so on. So we have some of them already implemented for some definition of implementation. Um, and try to have at the very end kind of, a, well, I think Matt and Georg, you were working on this kind of a white paper for diversity and inclusion. So something like a version 0 0.1 of diversity and inclusion and what we think about this as a working group. And that could be something really uh, that we can measure in terms of, hey, we have produced something. In, term, in terms of aligning this to my company in this case, I would say that whatever we can bring on the table related to Grimoire Lab and producing a specific panels, about having quantitative data and qualitative data around diversity would be something that would help me to keep uh, being part of this working group for the next year, for sure. So, this is my side. And I think we are missing Nicole today, that she, uh, well, she probably likes to, to say something else, for sure. I guess um, what, what I'll know, say, Mark, any yeah, so I, this kind of goes back to a, a conversation um, or something that I said earlier, which was, um, it's, it's about the board, actually. So it's about the people who are on the chaos board uh, more broadly. One of the things that I'm going to do at our, at our board meeting in late November is ask for ways that board members can be um, more committed to the working groups, to some of the day-to-day -day activities, that it's not just a twice yearly meeting <laughs> where discussions happen. Um, Cause I think those, those twice yearly meeting discussions have to be informed by understanding the, the inner workings of, of even just one, one working group. And so, and I understand that people like Emma, like sometimes things change and, it, it just is totally normal. And so I think if um, your role changes, this only further highlights something that's always on my mind, which is how do we continue to um, encourage people to participate in the projects like either DNI or growth maturity and decline, um, such, that, such that we continue to move these projects forward you know, kind of on this weekly basis, which might seem like really small steps day to day or weekly, but for a larger audience, I think this is, I'm sure this looks like a lot of work and it's really impressive, but we need to continue to maintain a way to, to engage people and, and new people. So this is kind of always on my mind. And I think with Emma, this just really, really, it just continues to reinforce this issue as an important issue for us as a project and then at the work group level. So. Okay. Yeah, and, and looking at the 
the governing board. There are a whole bunch of people on there that I have never seen any involvement in chaos at all. Correct. Um, which, yeah, makes me wonder so why, like they're, why they're on the board. Correct. I'd like to start, <laughs> well, because I think the, you know, the project's not that old, right? And so there's a, there's an initial need to kind of form a board. Yeah. I think from the LF perspective. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's time to kind of reassess that mm -hmm. at a board level. And anyway, yeah. point well taken. No, I mean, I agree. They should be involved in the project in some way. And to get Daniel and Emma updated, Matt had asked if any one of us from the DNI work group would like to be on the governing board so that we have DNI representation on the governing board. This has come up before that on the board there should be representation from the work groups. Yeah, and Georg and I sort of expressed some initial interest, but until you go back and actually have this discussion, there's nothing we exactly. nothing we need to do. No, when we'll have this discussion in like two weeks or ten days or something like that. Cool. Yeah, keep me. I mean, I I might be interested in that sort of thing, but it depends, like if you already have that or not, but keep me in the loop. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, so I, I wanted to say that perhaps another option as working group is that uh, our, our goal is uh, perhaps to produce something and when this is done, we simply jump to another set of ideas. So basically, we have created a working group and then after a while, simply the working group accomplished some, some goals in terms of this is the best we can do in terms of defining things. Uh, and then this is done and then we produce something specific, a document or software or whatever, and then we simply disappear as a group. Then perhaps after a year or something we say, does it make sense to keep evolving this? That's another way of proceeding in this case because so far in, what I see in chaos is that um, so we are some amount of people and we have some traction and some people, new, newcomers coming to the community, but after a while, it may happen that, well, basically we have uh, exhausted all of the uh, potentiality that we had as, as a working group. And that's something to consider. I mean, we don't really need to, uh, to spend all of our time or invest all of our time weekly in meetings if we feel that, well, perhaps we can go to a monthly meeting just to check. What do you think? Do, should we do something else? Because perhaps we created is good enough, or at least good enough for the time that we all have. So that's something to consider. But some other comments. And I don't know how, a question that I had in my mind was, I don't know how Linux, the foundation or funding of any of the project works. But like if there's something that's really promising or like potentially useful, like would they ever hire somebody? And this is not me looking for work. I'm thinking it would be really great to have someone who, whose job it was to push some of those things forward, right, in a paid capacity. Mm -hmm. like that, I know that's, but I, but I also, it's a question, like is that something that's being considered or could be pitched? It could be pitched. Yeah. So considered, I don't think so. Pitched, yeah. Hmm. I'm also not volunteering to pitch it. <laughs> I'm happy to do it. I don't have any problem with that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, I guess you'd have to have it, like, they'd say, like what? Like, being able to answer that question, but mm -hmm. you know, potentially we could. Mm -hmm. No, that's easy enough to pitch. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the, a lot of the bigger Linux Foundation projects have dedicated people in, like, sort of executive director positions, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. Um. I suspect knowing knowing the way the Linux Foundation works and working with them on some past projects that the only way you could pitch this and have it be successful is to know where the funding is going to come from. So if, for example, you know somebody like like an Intel or um, you know one of the one of the companies was willing to fund the salary of a person, that's generally how you get things funded at the Linux Foundation. Mm -hmm. Well, and also this is, um, so, you know, they have kind of their, their core set of, of projects, kind of like the projects that run on an OSI stack, right? 
and then they have uh, kind of projects that cross provide um, services across those kind of horizontal projects. So like SPDX is one of those, you know, like licensing and licensing and copyright or compliance issues is a critical component um, for kind of all of those, like a vertical that runs across those horizontals. Mm -hmm. um, and, or CII, I don't know if you're familiar with the core infrastructure initiative at the Linux Foundation, kind of another, another vertical. Um, and so they don't, typically the funding is for those kind of horizontal projects, the ones that are kind of at the, those mm -hmm. core infrastructure layers somewhere. And typically the more of the support projects are not funded mm -hmm. at the Linux Foundation. And I, I kind of see chaos as a project that kind of cuts across all projects, kind of that support style project. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But perhaps we can, for, for we, can bring, we can bring up the discussion, but sorry. Oh yeah, so sorry. I, I, I wanted to, to bring into context that perhaps the idea. So, uh, why is chaos useful for the Linux Foundation? So, if we have the answer for this, and I have my own my own ideas, then probably we can look for specific sustainability of the project, either because we are simply useful for the for the organization somehow, perhaps because we are useful for some some other projects or organizations across the Linux Foundation. Or perhaps we get, because we are self-funded, and then we, we we need to look for let's say sponsors of the of the working groups or or the chaos uh, uh, community as a whole. That answer probably then we 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 know where we have to go. Uh, the problem there is perhaps we are not that aligned with the Linux Foundation interest, or we are. So I I don't have the answer. Perhaps you have more clues. Um, Matt, about this? Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I actually don't know the answer to that. I know that uh, a, a lot of people, um, but it's purely anecdotal, right? A lot of people have a lot of interest in understanding the health and sustainability of open source projects, <laughs> just flat out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Whether it's DNI issues, <laughs> growth, maturity, and decline issues, and you know this too, right? Working at Baturgia. There is a, a big need for this, and a lot of people have not solved this issue. I don't think anybody solved this issue by any means. No. So, I, you know, I think too with these projects, I, th I don't think we should underestimate just the fact that we're continuing to foster a conversation and raise a conversation on a weekly basis. I think there's a ton of value in that. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't produce anything outside of maybe these recorded videos <laughs> to a YouTube site or some, some meeting minutes. But um, I don't think we should underestimate that either. No, 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 but it's, it's so I it, it want to, to look for a way to be really useful for other open source projects. And one of the questions that you mentioned are really useful. And some of the topics that we are covering in the DNA working group are really useful, of course. Mm -hmm. So the point is how to bring those projects on board. So we are we can show value in the we are doing. Um, I'm losing you, Daniel. How to Sorry. Hi again. I can hear you now. Is now better? Okay. Yeah, that seems better. Um, yeah. So I'm looking for G somewhere. Well, anyway. Um, so what, what I don't know, what I wanted to say is that uh, I... So I know that if we are, let's say, a really successful community in, in terms of bringing a lot of people on board or communities or projects or organizations, hey, there's, that's great. But uh, we are the number that we are, so we are growing organically. Uh, but we would be really successful if we are, um, how to say, so if we prove others that, so the DNI topic is really important. And people know that this is important. But the point is that how how come how we bring others on board? Mm -hmm. So we 
we let them know how this works and we involve more people in the same way that we are involved here. And on the other way, how we can prove others within the Linux Foundation that, well, the group is producing useful things for the rest of the human beings. Um, that specific thing about proving value is what I'm, I don't really know how to proceed. Um, unless everyone is basically... Oh, please what go ahead. You, I was going to say what you're saying resonates with me as far as, for two reasons. Inside mm -hmm. Mozilla, like there's m multiple teams and we're always, like there's always goals to build like reputation of our work internally and externally, right? If, and that sounds like the same thing within the Chaos Project. Unless it's like, we need to let people know that we're doing this so that we'll get the support that we need, right? So I think that's not unusual. And, and the second thing is that, you know, again, back to like OKRs and objectives, like having a KR for, you know, ensuring that important work is shared internally and externally, it's actually like just having that written down. Maybe this is just like something that I like really benefit from, but you know, checking your goals and going, oh, like what do we have to surface with the chaos community this month? Like having those sort of goals, I think helps. And I think that maybe the third thing I'd say is that, yeah, this work is hard to digest right now for someone that's just turning up, right? There's like, like I have one slide from my talk that I'm using internally at Mozilla and that's helping people start to get it. But actually maybe it's things like, you know, maybe we decide that what we really need to do is have some user stories about how someone, you know, um, has used a metric right now. Like right now I'm applying the leadership principles to a cohort of 12 women in the, to fix the fact that all the leaders are all men. So I, I will have a story of how I first applied those metrics to measure what I did, the thing I did, and then how I, you know, like maybe there's some stories that inspire people. And again, it would be so great to have pay, a paid comms person to do that because I don't know that anyone will actually have time, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, maybe we'll get someone that is still living somewhere where they don't have to pay rent or something, it turns out. But so it resonates with me that that's a challenge. I don't have a solution, just more like some guardrails maybe. I think those stories would be very valuable to have of how the metrics live in the wild and then also to incorporate the lessons learned back into the metrics that we have. And I also hear, as I'm doing the interviews, basically everyone who I talk to says, hey, please keep me in the loop. I don't have time to contribute, but I would really like to see what comes out of this. And everyone that I talk to, whether it's not only in the interviews, also at conferences. And so I think sharing what we do at conference sessions and having the tutorial and so on, that is also something that people keep turning up to. It's something people are very interested in. Mm -hmm. So I think that having this conversation and then as part of the Open Leaders Program, I asked um, to get an expert designer to look at our repository. So maybe sometime this week or next week, I'll have a meeting and have someone take a look as an external person on, and give feedback from a design perspective what we can change, not just design, visually, but also organization wise. So maybe that will help make it more digestible. So something for me that I've seen as in the chaos project overall is expectation setting. So there seems to be a lot of, um, a lot of interest in tell me what metrics I need to have tell me what button I need to push and then tell me what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> and it doesn't, I don't, it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. And so there's, I think there's only so far that the chaos project, again, whether it's DNI or GM growth maturity and decline, there's only so far that those projects can go, but the, the kind of the, the decisions that need to be made, um, and the way people react to the results from, from any metric, whether it's a quantitative or qualitative metric, are going to be so highly localized that the chaos project, I don't think, can ever really tell you what to do. So I think part of it, too, at least from my perspective, is, is setting expectations on how, what the reach of the chaos project is. We, we can tell you how to collect the metrics. We can tell you how other people have used them, but that's about it. Right? We can tell you why they're important too. 
but that's about it. We can't tell you what to do. We can, I think we can still suggest some what to do is like, um, for example, don't just measure once, <laughs> right? Or do a thing and, and then, you know, see some change and then leave. Like, mm -hmm. I think there's some things we can recommend so they can track their progress over time, at least from, okay. I don't know, that's just, uh, that's you something know, I'm trying to get engineers to do is like, make this part of your workflow, right? Like do this quarterly to this one measurement or, and give them one measurement. Mm -hmm. The um, other research that we did that I, I had, I don't think I've ever shared with this group is I actually hired um, somebody to go out and t interview DNI leaders to see like if they wanted to be involved in that collaborative because we briefly thought about doing that. And it was like 90% of the people were like, I don't have time for that. I'm already, especially in this space, like doing all I can, but please like give us things. <laughs> we heard that too. So I'm more just like echoing that, yeah, people want solutions and the buttons to push, even the people that are driving, you know, invested in that change for reasons like just being completely at the maximum of their capability. So whether we can change that or not, I don't know, but it's good. It's a good challenge to be aware of. <laughs> well, I mean, your point of integrating it into a workflow and doing it more than once, I think those are, those are great because those are kind of method approaches yeah yeah um but like what to do the challenge is what to do with the results so so if, if it's integrated into the workflow to capture a metric whatever that metric might be and capture that metric again whatever metric that might be several times what to do with it right that's where it gets really tricky and what not to do with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> super okay. hard. Right? Yeah. Particularly it's, important it's in so DNI. Yeah. What's that? So that's particularly important in DNI. Yeah. Well, I think even for growth maturity and decline, it is too, if you're looking mm -hmm. to to do as a community manager looking to do whatever it might be with your project. So it's like um so I don't know. I, I just I have a hard time figuring out, and like I said, I think about this a lot. As to what, how far out the chaos project goes, what's mm -hmm. the sphere of influence, and at what point do, as a project as a whole, we say, listen, that's we're kind of at the end of our line. We can tell you or you know introduce you to other people who are using these metrics, but as a project, this is where we stop, and I don't know where that is. It's super hard. Yeah. All right, I'm going to recommend, since we have just over 10 minutes left, that we transition into looking at the com upcoming conference proposals. Now, my, my first question, so they're, they're, they're both linked here, so if you want to just go ahead and open up those docs. Um, so, Emma, does this change or influence your ability to attend FOSDEM slash ChaosCon? Um, that's a good question. Or will you need to be there for other reasons anyways? I really wanted to go to Fosdom this year. So um, so let me, you need a yes or a no from me. Can I get back to you later today? I just, yeah, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to say I can if I can't. Yeah. I don't want to say I can't if I can't either. <laughs> well, we'll probably propose it either way, yeah. but I just don't want to attach your name to something that, Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, that you can't can't commit to. Um, so, so the first one that should be relatively straightforward because basically that's the uh, DNI panel. Um, it's pretty much the panel that was submitted to ChaosCon North America. I made a few very small changes, um, mostly around things like you know we're exploring some of the categories within the working group and. Um, I might have added the ethical considerations. I can't remember if that was in there before. It may or may not have been. Um, yeah, so I, I just reworded it a little bit, but it's pretty much the same as what we had in North America. And at this point, I'm assuming we could probably submit this both as a panel to ChaosCon and to the community dev room. Do people have any objections to submitting it to both places? Mm -hmm. And my, my assumption right now is that it would be... Um, Emma, Daniel, and 
myself along with anybody else that we could rope into joining. Mm -hmm. No, I have no problem with that. What do you think, Emma? Is there anything else we should add to the proposal? How does the panel look, the definition? Sorry, I had the other one open all the time. Oh, sorry. We can talk about that one first if you want. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm, no. Um, yeah, that looks good. Okay. Is there anything else we should submit to the community dev room? I mean, we talked about maybe jointly submitting something. I don't know how much time you have to, to devote to that, Emma. Not a ton right now. Okay. And maybe we just scrap that and just. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we, maybe we just scrap that idea and uh, just submit the panel. Yeah. Okay. Really best from my side. Okay. Yeah. Cause we don't want to put too much on you if you don't have the bandwidth. Well, I don't want to let you down. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Good. So Georg. So then the other proposal is for the tutorial that we ran in Edinburgh and then hopefully update it with more metrics that we can talk about and a uh, slightly changed idea of what we have at that time. Um, but it's pretty much the same as before. Unfortunately, I will not be going. So the question is who will? Um, so do we want to send the panel and the tutorial? I would go just for one because we are going to be two or three of us. But um, I don't know. I'm not. Um, well, let's, of course. Let's yeah. submit both. And okay. because we're also, Daniel, both of us involved on the selection team, we mm. can make sure that they don't select both of them. Okay. But okay. it, we may find out that a panel fits better in with if we if we got lots of really great workshops, maybe we, maybe a panel fits better. If we okay. got lots sense. of panels and not enough workshops, it might fit better as a workshop. So I think we submit it and then we we push that decision on the committee and then make sure that they know we don't want both. Yeah, and probably it's a good excuse to keep advancing in the metrics and and so on. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, perfect. The other question is, what about the third session that we had talked about? Daniel, did you put something together for that uh, session? Oh, no, I didn't. I, I was the last trip on a couple of conferences. And I'm sorry, but I was thinking that what about if we try to send um, a DNI talk to some of the uh, dev rooms, but not specifically focused either in community or something else, but basically in the technology. So if we go and say, okay, let's send something to the Python rev dev room, what can we do there? So for instance, I have some numbers from the C Python interpreter in terms of diversity or the Hadoop ecosystem that I produced a couple of years ago. It's something we can have or even the OpenStack community. I don't think we are gonna be accepted, but I don't know. And this might be another way to have DNI in any of the other dev rooms and not those that focused in the topics that we are covering right now. I don't know, yes. What do you think? I mean, I know for them, it's hard, but. <laughs> I, I like the idea. I, it's just not something that I know how to help with. What do you think, Don? Yeah, I don't, I don't know how much bandwidth I would have to help out with kind of a new presentation with new, new metrics for, for one of the other other right. technology projects mm -hmm. like you know if we were to do something for python we would need to write a new presentation to do something around mm -hmm. around python and i don't know how much bandwidth i have to help with that but if you mm -hmm. wanted to submit something i think that would be i think that'd so, be great so my idea would be basically so the, the one I, I gave here in spain what python was okay gender diversity in in the c python interpreter and then i compared this with openstack hadoop ecosystem and the linux kernel the other data sets i had Mm -hmm. um, that was a really good way to introduce the topic, uh, yeah. the tooling, 
um, then if we are in chaos, what we are doing. Um, this is another way to do the same, but in other different area. Uh, it sounds like you already have a talk, so that's... Yeah. Yeah, I would submit it. I would submit it to the Python dev room. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. So if, if any of you is willing to come with me, in a co-presenter here would be great. I don't know. What do you think? Is any of you on board? I won't, I won't be there. I, I want to, but I need to like know about the in the content. Yeah. Of course there. You want to be uh, Well, oh. I'm sorry to feel like I'm going to overcommit myself to FOSDEM, which is a no, problem it's, it's just have, an idea. Which is a problem I have every single year. No, because I want to do all the things. <laughs> and, then, and then all of a sudden I realize, oh my God, you're doing all the things. What did you sign up for? Um, yep. It's hard, right? Because if, if the stuff doesn't get accepted into the community dev room, then that makes it easy to do something in the Python dev room. Let's yeah, let's submit it. So I would say if Emma if Emma's gonna be there and she wants to do it, I would I would rather have Emma co present that with you mm -hmm. than me. That works for me. If Emma think, can't Emma? If, if Emma can't do it, um well uh then sign me up. I think I probably can. I just again I don't wanna like Yeah. Well let us yeah. yeah. Let us know in a day or two. We have plenty of time to when, when does the Python dev room close submissions? Because the, all the dev rooms are different. Uh, the community dev room is the 23rd, which is why I was pushing to get. Mm, I don't know. Check in right now. And then if magically my dissertation is done by that time and I have funding somehow, then I would love to join. Cool. Mm. So typically the, the, the presentation I have there is, this is the data I have so far from other communities. This, this is the data I produce for this community, and then some discussion. That's all. Uh, I'm looking for the Python thing. So, Python. Mm. It's 20 minutes content. And they say deadline is the first of December. Oh, okay. So one week more. Yeah, perfect. So let's think about this, and then during the next meeting, our next meeting, we decide on this. Perfect. Does it work? Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> that sounds good. Do we have anything else on the agenda that someone thinks they can cover in three minutes? Nope. <laughs> um, for you driving meetings. What? I said I have time to say, give you appreciation for driving these meetings so well, effectively keeping up. <laughs> I'll say thanks too. Yes, thank you. I would add um, on the interviews, I put my interviews on there. One thing that um, I find really enlightening is that I get good feedback on the metrics. And so I have all intentions to uh, contribute that back. And one of the things that I actually um, already started doing is to create a new page I just posted in the chat. It's leadership sponsorship. It's a metric that we didn't have on our radar, but I had a really good interview about sponsorship and how important that is. Um, so yeah, I'm, I've started putting that together and I'm going to create an issue and submit that. Cool. Huh, interesting. I look forward to reading all that. Yeah. So that was my one minute. Nice. Um, one thing you might want to include in this is how a sponsor, how sponsoring someone's different than mentoring someone. 
Yeah, I was going to ask that question, but I didn't know by time. Yes, uh, thank you. I I did ask that question during the interview because I wasn't sure either, and I have the data. So okay, I'm assuming sponsoring someone is paying them to to participate, whereas mentoring is something different. But maybe actually, it's not. Um, mentoring is showing resources, helping them along, helping training them. Mm -hmm. Where sponsoring is putting your reputation on the line to bring them up, advance them in conversations, and promote them uh, during discussions. Oh, okay. in, the Rust, in the Rust project, they used sponsor instead of mentor because they didn't want it to seem like they were unequal, like someone knew more than the other. It, it was either sponsorship or partnership, but it was more as an equality measure than anything else. So hmm. I like words, that. words get all, yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah worked a lot in open source <laughs> yeah but yeah that's a problem <laughs> all right um, thanks oh wait sorry one one more thing real quick before you leave um i was also thinking that if you're going to be a little less involved that we should um add another maintainer at least georg since he's been doing a lot of the work in the um i'm also happy to step up if you want to have an extra maintainer um but i would say let's definitely put someone else in if you're going to start diminishing and start so we can yeah. start bringing people up mm -hmm. yeah cool. Cool. Yep. I vote for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just make sure you review each other's and not your you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like yep. my pull request merged. <laughs> <laughs> Direct <laughs> permit to master. Not the way it works. <laughs> All right. All thanks right. everybody. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Good thing.